Hello, I'm Mike from MaxSales.com. And I'm Ron Dritline from Other World Computing. And we got our hands on the new Microsoft Surface Studio, which we're going to unbox, get some first impressions, and take a peek inside to see what can be upgraded. All right, so for those not familiar with the Microsoft Surface Studio, it's uh, Microsoft's all-in-one computer, and it has a 28-inch uh, multi-touch screen that swivels down to what Microsoft calls a studio mode. So that would be, right here's the vertical mode. Let's flip the box around and show you the studio mode where it folds down. It is a multi-touch screen. It's like 4,500 by 3,000 pixels. So it's in between a 4K and a 5K screen. So we will pick it up by the screen. And, and we got a little package in here. There's one power cable. So a keyboard, mouse, and pen. Apple-esque. And then the uh, the mouse. That's pretty. And then the pen. So the uh, Surface uh, screen will operate with the pen or your fingers. And then we also picked up the, the cool little accessory for this one. Surface dial. Uh, the Microsoft Surface dial which you you set the dial on the screen and it changes, it gives you different uh, options and settings you can change or configure. All right, so now we're ready to kind of show off this a little bit. And then there's protective plastic on the chrome sides on the armatures, just like that. And so then you can kind of see how it looks and the big feature is that it lies down in studio mode, which is really cool. And there's one big display. So as you can see, it has four USB 3 ports, an Ethernet port, power jack of course. This is a uh, mini display port. It is not a Thunderbolt port at all. This is an SD card and audio. It looks like headphones only. The pen is magnetic, so it should stick just to the side like that. Where did they put the power button? Oh, yep, if I remember right, it's just right here on the side, like a tablet. So I'm going to put an SD card in and see where... You know, people complain that it's on the back of the unit, but it's actually real easy to get to. I can kind of see why they did it, because when you're in studio mode, it's really hard to get to the side, but the back is super easy to get to. Photos, import. Open up the image. This screen is really nice. It's beautiful. I mean, it's uh, definitely different than uh, than an iMac, obviously, but it's you know some Apple-esque design elements. The keyboard is pretty Apple-esque. The screen overall, you know, kind of looks like a gigantic iPad. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that that screen, wow. This is the base model machine. It's got an i5 processor. Um, it's got eight gigs of memory, uh, one terabyte hard drive, and a 60 gig solid state drive, I believe. 64 gig solid state Six, drive. 64 gig. And then a, a two gig video. I really have always thought Microsoft's onto something putting the, the display kind of in this form factor. You start using it as a desk service, it's more comfortable. Your eyes can be in a more down position, which is more comfortable for long term usage. And it's just really something that others should really start paying attention to as far as where the screen may end up. Now that we have the dial actually paired correctly, yeah. It was kind of at first because we had the keyboard, pen, and the mouse automatically paired, so it's easy to assume that the dial paired, but it did not pair. So when you press it, it comes up with different options that you can then hit. So you got your audio, so we can turn the volume up and down. Really smooth on the action there. And what's really cool is you change the settings, the dial vibrates just a little bit to kind of say, hey, I'm, I've got something. Almost, it's not really a click, it's a vibration. And you can zoom in and out with the dial if you want. Now Microsoft's actually kind of touted something like a dial before. Um, way back in the day when they had their first tabletop surface. 
where stuff would come around from an object or something. So this is kind of cool to see it come to reality. The screen's so big, it doesn't feel obtrusive at all to it. You know. It's the dial version of the touch bar. Pen feels really nice. It's a, it doesn't feel like a rough plastic at all. It feels like a felt pen or a rubbery felt pen tip. So it just smoothly goes on the surface. So the surface dial, they're throwing in for free right now, which even if they charged 100 for it, I would say you have to get this because depending on the apps you use. Now, if you're just using the base photos app, there really wasn't much there as far as enhancing what it did, but it does seem like it would be very useful in other apps. I'm sure, once they integrate it into Photoshop, and like yeah. the video editing tools. So. Yeah, it just seems like a definite tool expansion with the, with the dial, which is very cool. And, it, and it's nice that it just kind of removes off screen and gets out of the way. Its weight actually feels about perfect. It feels solid. It is plastic, it's not metal, but it, the feel is great. So, really got to applaud them for that. All right, so here we have the iMac 5K set up next to the Microsoft Surface Studio, and you can see that the display ratio is different. This is 27 inch, 16 by nine. I believe this is in three by two, so you can see at 28 inches, it goes a little higher, a little wider, and a little lower than that. So in order to get into it, we're gonna pick it up and it's actually really light, surprisingly. And then we're going to put it face down on an anti-static mat. And then that will be ready to go inside. Okay, so one thing we uh, found is there's these little Some rubber feet that need to be popped off, sort of pried off with a, uh, with a uh, tweezers. And to get in, it's, uh, we got four T8 Torx screws. Looks like we have our power supply, uh, two fans, some heat pipes here, for CPU, GPU. Cover comes off. So here now we're seeing a uh, looks like an M.2 SSD. Uh, looks like SATA gig, 6 gigabit, which is interesting. Not sure why they wouldn't just go directly to PCIe or NVMe. Um, and we're seeing a standard uh, 2.5 inch hard drive here. And then we've got your heat pipes that uh, go to your GPU and CPU. So it looks like we have to pop off the heat pipes to get to the hard drive for replacement, whereas the M.2 this looks to be it's a SanDisk with the Silicon Motion 2246 XT controller on it. So the reason we're doing this is to uh see how difficult it is to get to the uh, 2.5 inch. It doesn't seem that difficult, but it's definitely more of a step-by-step uh, -step procedure. And then, uh, there's there's your heat pipe. Um, you've got your NVIDIA GPU right here. Is that the CPU? And then out comes your hard drive. Two and a half inch Seagate one terabyte. Uh, likely 5400 RPM, but that would be easily swapped out to a standard 2.5 inch SSD. I'd be curious as to why they didn't just use a full on SSD for the whole thing. It would probably have been an easier configuration. And they got much better performance. Now, one thing that um, we don't see in here is upgradable memory. So, memory looks to be soldered on the motherboard. Yeah, it, like, it likely is soldered right underneath here. And so it would be recommended for anybody that's buying this to get the max amount of memory you can get. Because uh, you're always going to kind of use it. Uh, they go up to uh, 32 gig. So your maximum is definitely... You can move a little bit more beyond the initial 8 that comes with it. I'm not going to pull that off. But the, no. the DRAM would be under here. And then... Um, yeah, you, and you can upgrade the video card to be a 4 gig instead of a 2 gig. This has a 2 gig, it's the base configuration. So, it's 
definitely would recommend upgrading the memory since that is not upgradable. And the, quite honestly, the VRAM is not upgradable, so you have to weigh your cost versus features. It depends want. on what you're doing. If yeah. you're a graphics, you know, intensive user, then I would say definitely uh, go for the upgraded. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to hurt in the long run. Hi, thanks for watching. So we had a lot of fun playing with the Microsoft Surface Studio. Uh, we've had a few days to play with it, and it really drums up interest when you show it off to others. People are excited about the dial, uh, some of the touchscreen stuff. They always want to try it out. They're intrigued by it. The Mac enthusiast in me says it's not quite ready for me. Uh, the tech enthusiast in me really likes a lot of the innovative features they have, like the multiple input, the dial, everything like that, and the big, massive, mega touchscreen. Uh, that I can see having promise. Uh, for some others, it might be more of a gimmick, or they don't really need the touchscreen that much, but it's really um, effortless uh, as far as when you transition from using a finger to a uh, dial, the mouse, to the pen. Um, there were a couple items that we found to be an issue during a slightly long-term use. Uh, one of that is it is an iPad-esque style screen, so it shows a lot of glare. And by that, I mean if you use it in studio mode and you have any type of ceiling lights in your work environment or workspace, that screen glare is going to be an issue, especially if you cannot turn off those lights, like in a lot of workspaces as well. The other was the webcam, and this one seems like Microsoft didn't test it out enough which is weird, um, but the webcam, unless you, the, the tilt is stuck on the uh, screen itself. So when you tilt the screen, there's only one way that the webcam actually works correctly to show you in it without you having to peek over and say, hey, I'm here. So it'd be nice if the top of the screen they had some type of cylinder that rotated with the webcam in it. So that way you could use the webcam at any type of tilt level that the screen is at. Um, one of the big ones that a lot of people will key off is the price. It's $3,000 for the entry level model. That's 8 gig memory, SSD hybrid, not a full on solid state drive, and 2 gig video card. Um, that said, it did everything we asked it to do. Granted, we didn't really put it through its paces on whether it was doing video editing or photo editing, but we did some light stuff and it did everything we asked. It should, by default, probably come with 16 gig of memory at that price and most likely one solid state drive, not a hybrid version. Um, and it's really not until $41.99, that's $4,199 that you get 32 gig of memory and four gig of video. So it's a bit pricey for what you get, but overall we had a lot of fun with it and perhaps you'll find it to be everything you've been looking for in a computer as well.